Hey, good morning, y'all. All right, so I'm taking y'all on a walk with me, just coming back from the gym. And I got up this morning at, and I was just praying, right? Praying, meditating, kind of going through my morning process. And I've been working on my book. Um, this is a book I was supposed to launch a long time ago, but y'all know me. I have a million projects going on at one time, right? So I was working on my book, and my book is called Praying Bold Prayers, okay? It's called Praying Bold Prayers. And I'm releasing it. Um, I'm supposed to release it uh, in the spring, but I'm praying to have it done by the end of this month so we can have a release in July. Hey, good morning. Hey, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I was working on my book and my book is about um, praying bold prayers and operating from a level of purpose, right? And one of the things that I'm really focusing on is prayers, especially for people who are entrepreneurs, right? People like myself, people running small businesses and people who are looking to um, advance their life, right? And one of the things that I see about a lot of us, especially those who are believers, is blockage in the area of money and blockage in the area of believing that God wants us to have an abundant life. And so um, the way that the book is set up is that um, good morning, y'all. The way that the book is set up is that there are, um, there's a message and then there's uh, affirmations, there's scripture, and then there are practical steps that I encourage people to take. And what I really love most are the practical steps, right? That God has a desire for us to win, but most of us miss the practical part. We miss the implementation part of like, all right, I prayed and asked God to give me favor, but <laughs> nothing happened. Well, did you do, y'all heard me talk about the other day, activating what God gives you. So let me tell you guys a couple of places where God wants us to have abundance um, and why he wants us to have abundance. Number one, he wants us to have abundance because we are his children. <laughs> like who wants their kids to suffer? Who wants to say that, oh, I'm gonna give birth to my children so that they can live a restricted life? Like, is that real? Like, why would a parent want to have their kids restricted and not being able to live from a place of abundance? Um, but what's happened over the years, we've taken the word and we have misconstrued it and we've given it, uh, we almost put self-sabotaging beliefs in scripture and use them in church, right? So you have people saying, you know, um, people talk about the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, the, the scripture does say that, but it's when money becomes an idol, right? But there's also a scripture in Ecclesiastes, and I think it's, I don't know what, is it 1010? Something like that, I'll find it and share it with you guys. But it says money answers all things, right? But there is a story in the Bible, in Matthew, it's in there a couple times, I think it's in like Matthew, and it's also in John, where a king has some money, he had three servants, and he gave three servants some money, and he was like, take this and grow it until I return. And when he gave it to the three people, right? One of them had five, one of them had three, and one of them had two, I think, something like that, or one. Well, the one with five went and doubled theirs, the one with three doubled theirs. The one with one went and buried theirs. And he wanted to preserve it because he was worried about losing it. And the king was like, why didn't you grow my money? <laughs> why didn't you invest it and allow it? to be able to get a return on it. And if you read that scripture, they actually punished him for not investing that. And so when you think about, it's tons of scripture about God wants to give us the abundance and the desires of our heart, right? It talks about God wants to give you the desires of your heart, that he would open up the windows of heaven that you won't have room enough to store, that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. It was like, you know, it's so many scriptures that reference what God wants to do in our life. But a lot of us don't believe it because we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of misconstrued messaging around what God wants to do in our life. And so I wanna start helping you guys break those barriers down because many of us have just never been taught practical implementation to what God has promised us. We don't understand what that looks like in real life. And so we live in fear of making a mistake when it comes to money or making, or we live in fear about being greedy if we ask for money or are we living in the root of all evil? 
Am I bad, God, because I want to build wealth? And the reality is, is that God wants you to be a blessing on the earth. God wants you. It says that everywhere that your feet tread shall be holy ground, right? That because of who you are, your presence and places will have impact on other people. And I personal believe, personally believe that we are all gifts to the earth with a specific contribution to give. And not everybody is designed to have wealth, right? But there are some of us whose gift is wealth, whose gift is the ability to have the wealth to be able to sow into places to build out and to develop. And guys, if you go and you read some of the older stories in the Old Testament about the kings and how they lived and some of the things that they did, you will hear all the, they were the ones, the suppliers, right? Where people would go to them for the lumber and people would go to them for equipment to build. If you read the story of Joseph, if you guys remember the story of Joseph, Joseph was sold to, um, to the Egyptians into slavery. Um, from his brothers. They acted like he was murdered, right? And they sold him into slavery. And um, basically he was in bondage. But here's the thing. He knew he had access to his gifts. He knew how to activate his gifts. And so when he was going through the process of being in slavery and dealing with all those things, whenever they needed a resource and he was able to provide for that resource, he stepped up and was like, oh, I can help you interpret these dreams. I can help you, you know, with different things. Long story short, Joseph ended up being second in command to the king. But check this out. Joseph had a vision about building wealth for them. He had a vision. And his vision was as they were, um, you know, different, they were farming back in the day, right? He had a vision to, to save half of everything that they produced and he had a vision that there was going to be a drought in the land and so everything that they had he started saving 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 right so fast forward seven years it was seven years of abundance and joseph had the insight to know okay everything we get we're going to store half well the drought came and the drought didn't just impact their land it impacted the earth now i want y'all to go back and read this and this is you know everybody got their own beliefs or whatever i don't have time for that i reference the bible and the word because it gives you wisdom right um so i don't have time to question who did what and what i'm just like lord translate to me what i need to know out of this so i can apply it to my life but here's the thing joseph was able to store up all these goods right and the whole earth was in a drought and everybody had to go to them to be able to get goods. And they talked about how all the things that he saved, what happened is people had to come and barter with him. So they would come and bring cows in exchange for wheat, or they would bring gold, or they would bring all these things that were no, no significance because they couldn't get any food. He had all the food and they had to exchange and barter with him. And because of his obedience, and his ability to be obedient to what God has showed him. He became the richest man on the earth because everybody had to barter with him because he was able to be in, 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 um, in operating in alignment with what God had told him to do. And see, a lot of us, we have suppressed that spiritual guy within us, which is the Holy Spirit. We suppress that wisdom that God has given us because we second guess and question, oh God, you know, God don't want me in a place of abundance. Listen, if things are happening on the earth, right, when all hell is breaking loose, you don't think God want his children to be the ones, to be the light, to be the impact on the earth for other people to witness, right? There's a, a scripture in Revelation. They said they were overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony, meaning by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And then the testimony of the people, the testimony of people is what saves others, right? It's what leads others to, to see God for themselves. The testimony and the witness of seeing what God is doing in the lives of other people is what gets people's attention. See, there are some of us who live by faith, but most of us live by sight. We want to witness and see that you've accomplished something before we actually believe in you. And see, God will use many of us as, as witnesses to others to show the power of who God is. Because he doesn't do it in us for us to be boastful 
or for us to be showing off. He does it in us for it to create an impact, to be a witness, to show what's possible. And that's in so many different ways, right? That's in healing. That's in, you know, restoring marriages. That's in um, every aspect of abundance, right? Abundance doesn't just come in things. It comes in the quality of life. It comes in the experiences. It, it comes in overcoming hardships. It comes in different ways. But we stop believing that God wants us to have abundance, that God wants us to live in a place of, you know, success. And it's because success has been misconstrued, right? It's like, oh, do I have a bunch of things? And it's not that. It's that God wants you to be in a place of a witness, that he wants you to be in a place of flourishing because you are the only God that some people will see on the earth. This guy used to tell me all the time, he said, you may be the only Jesus that some people ever see, right? Most people don't believe in God because they can't see him, right? They can't experience it. And so experience him. And so they, they don't know if it's real. You know, the world right now is filled with so many influences that are demonic okay so many influences that are demonic um and it's crazy because i feel like i can see them more and more now right in my face and and they know who i am and i know who they are right and they say you test the spirits by the spirits and the spirit know when they in the presence of somebody who's a believer and i've been coming face to face with a lot of different spirits lately and you realize that most people don't have a, a sense of discernment anymore because they've given up on a relationship with the Lord with being able to have a spirit of discernment and so people are vulnerable to any and everything that exists today so they don't know what's truth from what's not to what's light from what's dark people are easily manipulated and so if you're somebody who's in position that you you stand as one of God's, you have to own that and you have to walk in that light in every area of your life, especially, you know, from a place of, of, of a witness of what your life is a reflection of. If your life is broken, downtrodden, and you're struggling and you're always having a hard time, Nobody wants to follow that. <laughs> Nobody wants to surrender to that. I don't want to surrender to a guy where everybody look weak and broke down. I sure enough don't, right? But when you understand that God wants you to be a reflection of abundance, that God wants you to be a witness of the light, of the power, of what it is that he desires to give his children, then your level of impact will be that much more powerful. And you don't need those things to do that. It is just a part of the big picture that a lot of people want to see to know that God is real and so you know when it comes down to business I believe that God gives us gifts he gives us the ability to be a problem solver so that we can be able to impact people in the area of business if I am good at numbers and I'm running an accounting firm and my accounting firm is helping people to be good stewards over my fine over their finances why wouldn't I have an abundant business that is impacting people in the area of them and their finances? Why wouldn't I prosper? Why wouldn't I have multiplied impact in my profits, my revenues? Why wouldn't my business go viral or expand, you know, significantly by the impact that it's making? It just makes perfect sense. So it's okay to pray and see God in the area of business. It's okay to pray and ask God for your increase in your business. I do all the time. And one of the things that I had to understand about, about it, I used to struggle for a long time, y'all. I used to think about the fact that it's a sin to like want to be successful, right? It was a battle for me for a long time with ministry. And I was like, you know, God finally revealed to me like business is your ministry. Like you have the gift of being able to start companies, help people to grow companies, help people to actually monetize their businesses to create a livelihood. And here's the thing too, you got to think about this. You only got so much time on the earth. If God is giving you an assignment to fulfill while you're here on the earth, but you're so occupied with a job that you're not available to do the things that God has assigned you to do, and God gives you an opportunity to launch something so that you can have the freedom to operate 
in his will, according to the things that he has gifted you to do, why wouldn't he want you to flourish? Why does God want you to be held hostage on a job? Why does God want you to have limited income? Why does God want you to live in a place of stress? Why does God want you to be drowning in bills? You think God put you on this earth just to pay bills and die? If you think that, then you got some work to do. God put you on this earth to have a powerful impact, to reach, you know, to be a witness to others, to be a hope, inspiration, create a level of impact. And you have to be open and available to believe that it is your birthright to live in the abundance of a God that created this earth. I said it the other day when I went house hunting, and I'm going to say it to y'all again. If God, he used to remember that song they sing, he got the whole world in his hands. If God got the whole world in his hand, y'all, the whole world, creator of the earth, abundance, you know, he is the, the, the originator of abundance, created this earth for us to have an abundant life, right? If he is all knowing, omnipotent God, you don't think he want to give you just, it's just a fragmented piece of what he created. You don't think as a father, think about it as a father of his children, that he doesn't want them to have the best. If you guys remember the story of the prodigal son, it was where a, a, a wealthy father had two kids and he told him, I'm gonna give you all of your inheritance now. One of them chose to stay home and keep his inheritance. The other one went and messed up and splurged and ended up in the doggone, uh, in the pig, in the pigs, uh, whatever right but when he finally realized i messed up i need to go back home his father had open heart open arms and was like come on prodigal son i got you right that's how god is and many of us feel like because we've made mistakes in the past because you know we lived a crazy life because we didn't always do what was right that God wants to punish us God don't he doesn't work like that <laughs> God is not human he doesn't operate in human capacity he operates in divine um, divine alignment he's always seeking to help you to get the promises of what he wanted to give you he's always seeking to help you to grow to blossom to expand he understands your purpose he understands your flaws and he wants you to win the secret y'all is being able to know what God is calling you to do and activate that thing right so whatever vision whatever idea, whatever goal that God is giving you, activate it and begin to confess over your life, create declarations over your life that I have every resource that I need, that I will always live and operate from a place of abundance, that there is nothing too hard for God to fulfill in my life, that every need that I have shall be met, every desire of my heart can be fulfilled, that I will remain in alignment with everything that God desires to do in and through me and I will continue to operate according to God's will that he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that I could ask or think, that he will open up the windows of heaven that I won't have room enough to store, that he will continue to allow me to operate from a place of wealth and abundance. You have to begin to declare those things over your life. And the more you declare them, the more that you're gonna to begin to experience them. It's all about perspective. Some of us live limited lives because we choose to, right? Some of us live there because we choose to others who live in it's crazy because you don't have to be a believer to live an abundant life those are ones who are not right <laughs> there's so many people out here living their best life right now and the truth of the matter is because they believe in it they believe the possibility for themselves and so you just have to declare it you have to begin to operate from a place of confession declaration begin to change the vows that you're speaking over your life some of you guys are always expecting to live in struggle i'm just gonna have enough to pay my bills I'm always going to be struggling with this. I'm always, you're always confessing stuff over your life. And I always say, it's more money out here in the world waiting to come to me than it is for me to, you know, it's, it's just money everywhere. So you have to begin to confess that that money will be able to come into your life and to your bank account, that you will be a good steward over your finances, that you will actually use it to tithe, to sow, to increase the kingdom, to invest in others, to be in position to constantly expand the ability to witness to others. Like it's so many reasons why God wants us to operate in a place of abundance. 
we just have to begin to invest in learning, developing, evolving, growing in those areas and speaking and confessing it over our life. And here's the thing, God can switch your circumstances in an instant. Many of us, we think that if it doesn't happen right away, that it's not going to happen. And a lot of times we're watching other people and we're thinking, oh my God, everybody else is experiencing this except me. Why is God leaving me out? Why can't I have it? Why can't I experience it? Here's the thing. God can fulfill every promise in your life in an instant, in a suddenly moment. All it takes is for you to continue to confess and expect it. The more you expect it, the more you confess it, the, the, way, the, the way that God works, he'll continue to put in suddenly in your life, suddenly circumstances. So declare it over your life, y'all. Listen, there are things that God told me at 19 that I'm just starting to experience, right? And as they say, delay is not denial. Just because it didn't happen instantly, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna happen. What it means is that you have to continue to confess and pray over your life, and you have to keep that vision before you. What is it that God told you to do? If God told you to do it, like they say, if God gave you the vision, he'll give you the provision, all right? That means that he will provide for every need that you have and you have to expect it. It's not up to you to figure out the how. It's not up to you to keep trying to wonder when. It's up to you to stay in faith, keep operating in where God calls you to go and expect God to show up and declare it over your life that God, you gotta do this. All this other stuff that you told me to do, I'm gonna show up and do what you told me to do, but I'm gonna expect you to fulfill every promise that you said you're gonna fulfill. You said you'll provide for all of my needs. You said that you will give me exceedingly abundantly. You said whatever I ask, it shall be given. You said knock and the door shall be open. Seek and we shall find. Trusting you with all my heart and you'll um, and lean out on my own understanding and all my ways acknowledge you and you'll direct my path. Keep directing my path, keep showing me the way. And I'm gonna trust in you to keep providing. So I wanna encourage y'all, you know, don't let other people's religious restrictions rub off on you. A lot of us got church wrong. A lot of us got the word wrong. A lot of us got God wrong. And at the end of the day, although people have good intention to lead, although people have, although people have good intention to help you in your journey of life, everybody's trying to figure it out. Nobody has all the answers. Nobody has all the solutions. And a lot of people sometimes are wrong. I could be wrong. We all can be wrong. The goal is build your own relationship. See God for yourself. But if anything, begin to confess his word over your life and trust and believe that word above all else. And if that word says that he will provide all of your needs, trust that he's going to provide all of your needs. If he said he's going to do exceedingly and abundantly, confess it over your life every single day. There's something, I'm doing a transformation workshop on Saturday. If you guys want to learn more about it, DM me and I'll send you the information. But I'm going to be spending a lot more time with people really helping them to learn how to practically um, apply God's word to their life. Because there are things that we were told is witchcraft, right? <laughs> you know, the Christian church is, is sometimes we can be skeptical about anything, anything and everything, right? But there are things that are physiologically connected to your breakthroughs. And there's something that recently just came out called um, not recently, it's been around, but I just got introduced to it called tapping, right? And it's called, I think it's called Emotional Freedom Technique, EFT. And what it's designed to do is to release your, your life, release areas of trauma in your life. And a lot of us have trauma. We have trauma around money. We have trauma around relationships. We have trauma around um, our belief system. You know, some of you guys may have been controlled a lot growing up and told what you can and cannot do so you don't really have confidence in what you get in, what the spirit leads you to do. You don't have confidence in your own vision. So you might feel a little apprehensive about operating in the things that God calls you to operate in. Some of you guys have trauma around money um, because you may have grown up, you know, struggling financially. Some of you may have trauma in confidence because you may have dealt with different things that compromise your confidence. So EFT, emotional freedom technique, what it's designed to do is called tapping is it teaches you 
to acknowledge the trauma and the struggle uh, that you have, but to say, I love myself in spite of, right? So it has you say these kind of, you address those things and you tap them. Y'all can go research or look it up on YouTube, but they have you to acknowledge the trauma and begin to hit certain median, meridian points on your face and on your chest in different areas. And the whole concept of it is erasing and replacing what's inside of you and creating a permanent commitment to alter what you believe. So you'll find that you're tapping and saying, you know, although I have this pain or this stress or this fear, I still love myself, right? And it seems corny, but y'all at work. I was doing it this morning. And see, what I do is I just add scripture to it. I keep confessing things over my life, right? And so one of the things um, that I have to keep giving myself permission to do, especially in the area of business, is talk about the Lord. You know, it's like a lot of times I'm teaching people about business and I have a fear of, or I had a fear of mixing God with business because of many reasons. But I realized like a lot of people are locked up because they don't have any real spiritual guidance. A lot of people are very lost. They're lost souls and they don't understand how to have that intuitive connection to where God is leading them. And you know, here's the thing, you guys, I'm around a lot of wealthy people all the time. You know, I go to different workshops, I'm in different masterminds, and it is very normal for me to be around people that make five, 10, $20 million a year, right? And here's the thing, the more that you are in these rooms, the more they talk about spirit. Now, what spirit are they pulling from? It's their own personal choice, but it's not a room that I'm not in. And in a lot of these different circles that they're not talking about the spirit within and the ability to divinely connect to your source. Some may say the universe, some may say Buddha, it's not for me to judge people faith. What I am saying is they understand it's a divine connection to your elevation. It's not some works. Listen, you can't hustle your way to an abundant life. I don't care how many hustles you have. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care what you attempt to, you know, do how many times you, you know, overwork yourself. You can't hustle your way to an abundant life. You can't hustle your way into a life of peace, right? You can't because y'all think that money is the answer. No, money is a solution, but money is not your place of peace. Your peace comes from your purpose, from being divinely in alignment to understanding who you are and whose you are and where you're called and what your position to, to create is impact, right? You'll, you'll discover that too in these circles that I'm in. A lot of them say the same thing. I was listening to a guy the other day. He averages about $20 million a year. And it's so funny because I've been following him for about, maybe about, I'll say about, probably about five to seven years, right? And I remember his very bullish approach to money back in the day, right? He was very money, 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 money. And today he's like, I was wrong. <laughs> he was like, it's not about success. He said back then it was about cars and houses and this and that. He was like, no, now it's about, it's, it's about significance. It's about what impact can you make, right? And so that's where the real success lies. And when you get there, you get above just success for things and a level of significance, you start understanding like, oh, I'm here for a purpose. I'm here for impact. I'm not here to make money just to get things. That's the easy part, right? You can go buy a whole bunch of stuff. That doesn't fulfill you. That is not where fulfillment comes from. Your fulfillment is gonna come when you are connected to significance and impact and purpose. And that all comes from being divinely in alignment with what God has called and positioned you to do. And so when it comes to prayer and profits, God wants you to profit. But understand that you're not just a P-R-O-F-I-T. You are a P-R-O-P-H-E-T, right? Everything that you do is a prophecy to other people. It's a witness. It's a level of impact. It's the ability to show people something and witness to them to show them, to give them hope. So I hope that you guys understand profit and prayer is possible. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's also so much more to the story than just, you know, things. God wants you to have things. He wants you to have an abundant life. 
but he also wants you to have a purpose-driven life. And so it is my prayer for y'all that as you begin, you know, just every day, you guys, make a commitment to confess the right word over your life, right? I would dig into some of those scriptures and begin to look on topical things and just confess them over your life. There's a lot of people telling you a lot of things, but you can't get God wrong and God won't. It's like God doesn't want you to have perfection. He just wants you to have surrender, a surrender spirit. He wants permission. It's free will, right? Permission to be a part of your life to help make things make sense. So I'm praying over my business. I'm declaring 10x profits in my business, not just for things, but for the impact, for the ability to do things and open doors. Money opens doors, y'all. Money gives you options. People are afraid of money. Money is a tool. Money is here to work for you. It is an employee, right? And the more employees you have, the more work you can, more things you can put to work. And we got a lot of work to do. So with that said, I pray that y'all get something out of this. Y'all went with me, with me on my two mile walk. I just left the gym and I'm committed every day to walking at least a mile to two miles. I want to get up to four miles. I feel like I could do it right now, but it looks like it's going to rain. It's been raining. And uh, yeah, so this is just a walk in chat. And these are things that I often think about. So if y'all want to learn more about our transformation workshop, we're going to get into confronting limiting beliefs. We're going to get over the spirit of self-sabotage. We're going to be able to identify how to operate in your, how to identify and operate in your zone of genius how to get unstuck, how to trust yourself, how to confront the traumas of your past and begin to recondition those belief systems. It's a lot of things that, y'all, we need some soul work. Many of us are sitting around here thinking that it's reading a book or that it's going to a seminar or listening to some influencer on social media. Nah, man, we need therapy. Let me tell you guys, a lot of us, need real therapy therapy about just all kind of stuff we got a lot of trauma in our life y'all and that trauma tends to control our narrative and how we respond in life and how we show up and so you might be wondering how come i can't get my breakthrough i've been praying for 15 years because you have not addressed a lot of stuff that has been hiding in you as a um, culprit of sabotage, right? It's limiting beliefs up in there. It's stories from your childhood. It's experiences that you've had that created fear. It's a lot of stuff going on inside of us. And people think it's just buying another course. No, course might be helpful, but you can buy all the courses in the world. But if you don't deal with your soul work, then you're going to always be in the same boat. So I'm actually um, helping, just helping people get beyond this whole what I did stuff. It's not what you do. Sometimes it's what you need to not do anymore. Unlearn, stop doing, stop believing, stop thinking. That will make all the difference in your growth and in your progress, right? Many of us are walking around in shame. I know I was for a long time because I felt like I should have been a lot further than where I was but I didn't realize that I had a lot of rooted disobedience in me, right? A lot of limiting beliefs and a lot of fears that was making me be disobedient to my assignment. And so I would get frustrated. Cause it's like, why isn't this working? Why isn't this coming out the way that I thought it would? I've been praying, I've been doing a work of And God was like, I ain't tell you to do that. That's of your own doing. And you're trying to allow your work to put you in position of purpose, it's conflict with that. You can't work your way into your purpose. You have to get in spiritual alignment and be in flow, right? That may sound counterproductive, but you got to work on you. You got to get inside, internal, not external. It's not about doing more things or adding more things to the to-do list. It's about tapping into your spirit, listening to what God is saying and what he's telling you to stop doing sometimes god is trying to show you to stop doing some things right some of y'all are such people pleasers 
You want to please everybody so you say yes to everything. Every time somebody needs you to do something, yeah, I'll be there. Can you do this one? Yep, I'll do it. Can you take these people here? Yep, I got it. Can you help me with it? Yep, yep, yep. And God is like, stop. You ain't got to help everybody. You're not the savior. It's not your responsibility to be available for everybody. I need you to slow down and stop and say no and go in your house and listen to me and stop trying to listen to everybody else. So it's all kind of stuff in there, y'all. What is God saying to you? What is he showing you? What is he asking you to stop doing? There's so many things. So anyway, we're gonna talk about some of this stuff on, on um, Saturday for our transformation workshop. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this helps. My hair is a hot mess. And I think I'ma still go and walk or maybe even run to my wives. I'm just gonna keep, keep walking. Oh shoot, I got meetings. <laughs> Keep walking but um yeah just wanted to have this conversation with y'all hopefully to help somebody so if it help you comment below and i'm gonna go do one more round of walking before i call it quits to get at least three miles maybe three miles in this morning <sighs> so how are y'all doing today are y'all ready for a shift in your life? Y'all ready for transformation nation? I'm getting ready for repositioning. It's time for a shift, y'all. Time for a major shift. So anywho, y'all have a great and awesome day. I'm gonna go run real quick and then shower up and get ready for morning meetings. And I pray whatever business you're in, that you begin to receive that God wants you to win. If it's in alignment with where you're supposed to be. I pray that God gives you a peace. That he opens up doors. That no man can shut. That he gives you confidence to hear his voice and follow his will. That he gets you to stop seeking validation from everybody else. That he empowers you to be bold enough to act on the vision that he gives you. I pray that you have a willingness and a heart to surrender to God. And accept that you don't understand fully who you are. And that it's okay to tell God that you need help and guidance. I pray that you begin to take God's word over every other man's word. I pray that God allows the spirit of um, the Holy Spirit within you to wake up the discernment within you. I pray that God gives you a circle of people that begin to wake up the gifts within you that speak God's word over your life. I pray that you stop living in a place of scarcity. I pray that you stop living in a place of of worldly expectations, meaning you let the world set the standard for who you are. I pray that you position yourself to be available as a vessel that God can use to create impact so that you can experience exceedingly abundantly above anything you ever thought could happen in your life. I pray that that vision that God has given you, that you've given up on, that you thought you were too old for, that you had to wait and get more degrees and certifications for, that your kids had to get older for, that you had to keep delaying. I pray that God makes room in your life so that you can begin to honor that gift, that you can bring that vision back up, wake that leaping giant within you, and that sleeping giant, and you understand the power that God has given you to operate in the fullness of who you're called to be. I pray that God gives you a sense of confidence a bold confidence that you stop worrying about what people think that you stop living your life worrying about what people are going to say that you stop trying to fit in that even if the vision that he's giving you seems odd weird strange that it doesn't blend into what you expected your life to look like that it doesn't make sense that you still have a surrendered confidence to do what god has given you that vision to do i pray that you stop looking at your schedule and saying that i don't have time that instead you look at your schedule and say, I'm on assignment and I'm gonna make room for what God has called in my life first. That you learn to put your assignment on your life as a priority so that you can understand that everything else will work together for your good by you honoring God's assignment in your life. I pray that you stop living in your past, that whatever trauma you face, whatever extenuating circumstances that have held you bound, whatever fears, whatever shame, whatever lack of confidence, 
low self-esteem, low self-worth. I pray that we break those chains of bondage off of your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you have such a rise over all of those circumstances that they become the stories that you use to impact others, to set others free. And I pray that you continue every single day to wake up and give your morning to God for instruction, understanding that you are on this earth for such a time as this and that you stop living, waiting for the world to tell you what's happening and what, what conditions are. But instead, you understand that you are a spirit being, having a human experience, which means that you don't live according to the world's standards. But instead, you're operating from a place of divine assignment, planted on this earth for such a time as this, to do great and mighty things, and that there is no restriction on time when it comes to operating in your assignment on the earth. I pray that you stop operating in time and instead begin to operate from a place of eternity, that you understand that this is so much bigger than a human being, so much bigger than you wanting and desiring limited things here on this earth, but instead understanding that you are an angel to somebody, to somebody's, understanding that you were planted here as a, a beacon of light, that you were brought here as a source of energy to bring into a dark world where people are hurting, where people are lost, where people are seeking answers, understanding that you are an answer to many people's prayers and not to be a people pleaser, but you're operating in your gift is going to be an example, a witness and set a standard for what a lot of people needed to see so that they too can become believers. I'm praying that you stop letting your circumstances dictate your actions. I don't care where you live right now. A year ago, I was in a two bedroom, 900 square feet apartment and I felt like I was suffocating and I was dying not because of just the place that I was in, but because I felt like my life should have been a lot further. But God had me in a holding tank and who knew a pandemic would come and that he would begin to open up all kinds of doors and reposition me. And let me tell you about that. There was a lot of things God told me to do before the pandemic happened and I didn't do it. Why? Because I didn't, I didn't allow myself to be caught up in what everybody else was doing. And I missed out on a lot of things that I was supposed to be prepared for that he told me in 2012 to be prepared for. And so I would say to you, even in missing the mark, even in disobedience, even in our impatience, God will still redeem the time in your favor. He will still not let you skip a beat. You still will not lose or miss out on any of the blessings and the promises that he has over your life. Don't look back and regret, but look up and surrender and say, God, I surrender all. I trust in you. I believe in you. I have faith in you. I have confidence in you. I know that you're still going to allow all things to work together for my good, according to your will and purpose. You're still going to allow me to completely fulfill the assignment on my life. And I surrender. Show me the way. So don't live in regret. Don't live in shame. I know we get impatient. I get there too. But I pray that you start operating in these, these places and spaces of expectation, of divine, supernatural expectation to the point that you're obedient to your spirit and where it's leading you and calling you to do. Cut down those relationships that are not honoring what God is calling you to do. Walk away from those circumstances that are not honoring you, that are you called to do. God will show you what to do. I ain't telling y'all to quit your jobs, but I'm just saying, listen to what God is saying, and he will open up a lot of doors. So that is my prayer over you guys this morning. As we are on this prayer walk, that's what me and Chloe used to call it, prayer walk. Every time we walked, we would pray. We used to do it a lot in Memphis. Ooh, I used to pray to get up out of there. Now I'm walking in Austin. <laughs> so anyway, go on your prayer walk if you have to. Go on and confess over your life what you need to. But whatever you got to do, y'all, get back in tune with what the Spirit is leading you. And stop allowing this world to create fear. Stop allowing this world to suppress your gift. Stop allowing people to make you feel purposeless. Stop comparing yourself and telling God that he didn't do a good enough job when he created you. And instead, honor who you are. Honor where you're called. Honor the gifts inside of you and walk in your power. Own your power. Own your boldness. Be bold. Do the things that you know you're called and gifted to do. And God will do the rest. I love you guys. I hope you have a great and awesome day today. I have no idea what today is. What is today, y'all? Y'all know I never know the days, right? <laughs> Every day is Friday to me. I think today is Tuesday, maybe. So I pray that y'all have an amazing Tuesday. I will continue to be praying over you guys while I'm walking. If you have any specific prayers you want me to pray over you, 
you can send them to me in my DM. And um, I'll be releasing my Praying Bold Prayers book. And it touches a lot of this stuff. I pray over our purpose. I pray over our career paths. I pray over our belief systems. I pray over our limiting, God being released from our limiting beliefs. So if there's specific prayers you need, let me know and I'll add them to the book. All right, love you guys. Have a great and awesome day. And my hair is blue. <laughs> Bye, you guys.